Hi there. Welcome aboard. You're aboard. So I'm Raleigh Brown, and this is a special cowboy edition of Curve Flattening Concerts. Been wanting to do this one for a while, and uh, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, the instrumental will not be a cowboy instrumental. I figured for those of you who are not cowboy fans, I should still offer something, but everything else is. And this first one, and they, and they span a, a long, long group of periods in my life. This first one I heard when I was just a little kid. Um, it was on a, a wonderful album called uh, Gunfighter Ballads by um, Marty Robbins. Gunfighter Ballads and something. Anyhow. But these first two songs have a real close relationship to me, and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit in between them, maybe. So here we go. town of Olive who rode a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. No one dared to ask a question, no one dared to make a slip, cause that stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town he came riding from the south side slowly looking all around he's an outlaw who's been running came the whisper from each lip and he's here to do some business with that big iron on his hip big iron on his hip now in this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Twenty men had tried to take him, and those twenty men were dead. He was vicious and a killer, though he used a twenty-four, and the notches on his pistol numbered one and nineteen more. One and nineteen more. Now the stranger started talking, made it plain to folks around. Was an Arizona Ranger, wouldn't be too long in town. He came here to take an outlaw back alive for baby dead. But he said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red. Now, it wasn't long before this story was relayed to Texas Red. But the outlaw didn't worry. Many men who tried were dead. Twenty men had tried to take him, twenty men had made a slip. Twenty-one would be the ranger with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. Now the morning passed so quickly it was time for them to meet. It was twenty past eleven when they walked out in the street. Folks was watching from their windows, nobody took a breath. They knew this handsome ranger was about to meet his death, about to meet his death. And there was forty feet between them when they stopped to make their play. The swiftness of the ranger is still talked about today. Texas Red had not cleared leather when a bullet fairly ripped, and the ranger's aim was deadly with that big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. It was over in a moment, and the people gathered round. There before them lay body of the outlaw on the ground. Well, 
Well, he might have gone on living, but he made one fatal slip when he tried to match the ranger with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. Big iron, big iron. He tried to match the ranger with a big iron. So that's Big Iron, and, and uh, was recorded by Marty Robbins. Um, I should have checked to see who actually wrote it, but I didn't. I'm bad. So I see this song as being very closely related to the next song. They tell, they tell two sides of the same story, essentially. And this next one was written by Norman Blake, and it's, um, it's almost the same story kind of told from uh, a more sympathetic view to the outlaw. I should mention that Suki the cattle dog, the cow dog, is in the room, but she's over sniffing in Janice's stuff, so she's not gonna, probably not gonna make an appearance. So this is Billy Gray. Billy Gray rode into Gantry Back in 83, there he met young Sarah McRae. The wild rose of morning, that pale flower of dawning, the herald of springtime in his young life that day. Now Sarah, she could not see the daylight of reality. To her young eyes, Billy bore not a flaw. Knowing not her chosen one was a hired gun Wanted in Kansas City by the law understood to say he was looking for Bill Gray, a ruthless man and a dangerous outlaw. Now when the deadly news came creeping to Billy fast sleeping, there in the Clarendon bar and hotel, he ran towards the old church that lay on the outskirts thinking to climb to that old steeple bell. But a rifle ball came flying, face down he lay dying, there in the dust of the road where he fell. And Sarah, she ran to him, just cursing the lawman, accepting no reason, knowing he was killed. Knows no season, no rhyme, nor no reason. 
sun Justice is cold as the Granger County clay Yes, true love knows no season No rhyme nor no reason Justice is cold as the Granger County clay So that's Billy Gray, and that, that was written by Norman Blake, the great guitarist and songwriter. And um, uh, I had the opportunity to ask Norman once. Uh, I said, well, when you wrote that, was it, uh, did you intentionally mean it as like the other side of Big Iron? Because um, Big Iron was a really popular song in the late 50s, early 60s. I think that would be maybe in the, just in the early 60s. And um, he said, no, those, those songs don't have anything to do with each other. <laughs> and I said, okay, whatever you say, so that's that. Um, so, you know, I, I did think about doing a, a cowboy instrumental. And um, uh, I, I actually uh, couldn't find one that I, that I could get ready in time for one thing. And also... Um, most of them have a, like a really simple melody that's pretty short, and then you just repeat the same thing again and again. So I thought, well, I don't have to confine myself to just cowboy instrumentals. So um, actually yesterday, when I did my Sunday morning concert, I was planning to, to play this one. And then uh, for some uh, unknown reason, if I only had a brain came into my head, and I played that instead. So today, I'll play this one, and you'll figure out what it is about halfway through this is the there's a verse and then there's the actual song So that's someone to watch over me. By George Gershwin.
I'm always tempted to say, and his lovely wife, Ira, but I stop myself most of the time. Um, so I have one more for you today. And this is another, another cowboy song, kind of modern cowboy song. And um, I first heard this one by, by Jerry Jeff Walker, but he didn't write it. It was actually written by a guy named Michael Burton, who just passed away last year. Um, and he was, among other things, a cowboy and uh, had been kind of a cowboy poet as well, from what I understand. And there's actually, this is, the song is called The Night Rider's Lament. And uh, there's actually a website, the, the Night Rider's Lament dot com, I guess, something like that, if you look it up. And it has some information about Michael Burton there and maybe about the song. He, he lived in Alaska, which explains, uh, at, at one time, which explains part of the lyrics, I think. So um, I'll, I'll say goodbye at the end, but also thanks for tuning in now. And, uh, and um, at uh, 3.30, my friend Alex Bevan returns. He's taken a few days off. I doubt he got too rusty. I think he'll be, uh, you know, hitting it hard right away. And, um, and we heard Cozy Sheridan and Charlie Coke this morning. Uh, I, I put it up on my Facebook page. If you guys get a chance, go hear them on Tuesday mornings at 10.30. Um, uh, both uh, great songwriters. Cozy is, uh, has much more of a kind of public persona and history, but they're both doing great stuff. And fun to listen to, just great people. So here's the Night Rider's Lament. Well, as I was out last night a-riding The graveyard shift midnight till dawn The moon was as bright as a reading light For a letter from an old friend back home he said, now why do you ride for your money? And why do you rope for short pay? You've been getting nowhere and you're losing your share. You must have gone crazy out there. said last week I run on to Jenny she's married and has a good life boy you sure missed the track when you never come back she's a perfect professional's wife she asked me why does he write for his money and why does he rope for short pay he's been getting nowhere and he's losing his share he must have gone crazy out there but they've never seen the northern lights they've never seen a hawk on the wing and they've never seen spring hit the great divide finished up reading that letter and I tore off the stamp for Black Jim when Billy came down to relieve me man he just looked at that letter and grinned 
And he said, now why do you ride for your money? Why do you rope for short pay? You've been getting nowhere And you're losing your share You must have gone crazy out there You've been getting nowhere And you're losing your share Boy, you must have gone crazy out there So that's the show for today. Thank you for tuning in and listening and joining me. I'll read my uh, my chat here when I'm done. I had to kind of concentrate on my singing, so I didn't say hi to everybody. I see Bunny is there and, and Jeff Blumenthal and Tom Dietz and Burks. All you guys, it's good to see you on here, and I appreciate your, your, uh, your patience with me, your patronage. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, try to stay safe and stay sane. These are hard times. Some of the states are opening up, and, uh, and sometimes they might not be doing it for the right reasons. Take care of yourself. Make your own choices if you can. Pardon me. And um, if you get cranky, take a nap. And look out for my buddy Alex Bevan in 10 minutes. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Great to see you all here. <laughs>